What's up, everybody? I apologize for coming out here looking like Guy Forks with my hoodie on and all you can see is teeth. But tonight I want to do episode five of Police Stops. And what I'm going to do is start off with seizures because most of these, uh, most of us have no idea what exactly or when we are quote unquote seized. And basically what it boils down to is Terryville, Ohio. I've been doing a lot on Terryville, Ohio, because that is the basis of any and every traffic stop or even street encounters. Because when we're looking at it, there's another case that I want to bring in. It's Brendan v. California. I'll do another episode on that one so I can bring it up. But if you're going to look it up, it's B-R-E-N-D-L-I-N versus California. It's a 2007 case. And basically what it says is you are seized, even those that are passengers in the car, at the very time of the stop. So whenever it is that you're coming up, you see the lights come on, you're pulling off to the side of the road or wherever. And as soon as you're stopped, you are deemed for purposes of the Fourth Amendment as seized. So that's one thing that that can be caught up on and kind of get your grasp on. Now, again, we also understand that anything that deems from that point on has to stem from probable cause. I've gone over at least three videos that deem something with probable cause because, again, that's the crux of any stop because there they have to be the establishment of a crime. If there is no crime, there is no reason for it to stop. And we're also going to go into the fact of the police lights. We're also going to go into the sirens because we're going to talk about when they can be used and why are they used. Because generally when you hear them, you think of an emergency type situation. And that's exactly what they're supposed to be used for. They're supposed to be used uh, as uh, emergency purposeful acknowledgement or procedures that are done to let you know, hey, there's an emergency, get the hell out of the way, or move over, or whatever. But, going back to seizures. Okay. Basically, the seizure itself is a, is a forcible disposition of the person arrested. Well, we know that's one definition of it. But we just also understood in Brendan v. California, that it's Basically, when you're pulling off to the side of the road, you're seized. Because that's when you have things that come into play like, <clears throat> excuse me, am I free to leave? Or when you start asking questions of them, and it's not, oh, what's your badge number? Or, uh, or my favorite thing is they come up and say, can I see your license registration? My first question is, what was the purpose of this stop and you employ any emergency procedures? Because again, they are amendable to me, so they have to answer me. And then they'll go into whatever. But again, they have to articulate the actual crime. They actually have to articulate the probable cause. And you're also going to start hearing a phrase that, um, that I brought up is actually technically in the next episode, because it's episode six where I speak about an unlawful act, which is basically pulling you over without uh, oath or affirmation that is signed by either a judge or a witness or them witnessing you doing something or in the act of something. And there's damage to someone's property or there's damage to someone that you have been seen or known to have caused. But it's going to be called now. If it's not, if it's not one of those, it becomes an unlawful act for them to even stop you. Anytime your locomotion is stopped, it's a Fourth Amendment seizure. So, if your locomotion is stopped, you are seized by means of the Fourth Amendment. In order for there not to be a violation of the Fourth Amendment, which makes it a quote unquote lawful stop, there has to be probable cause. Absent probable cause, it becomes an unlawful stop. So, 
an unlawful act cannot produce lawful results. And what you'll mean, what that actually comes from is the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. That is one that you're going to hear a lot from me as the series goes on and in a few other series, especially the court series. Because again, a lot of these are deemed so we can go into court and we can put something together and see what it is that we want to get to get, uh, get done and basically make sure that they are policing properly that you are actually in front of them not just to be paying somebody a couple dollars basically a detention is seizure for the purposes of the fourth amendment and occurs whenever a law enforcement office by means of physical force or show of authority in some way restrains the liberty of a person that's florida v bostick 1991 it's a supreme court case and again, Bostic, B-O-S-T-I-C, Florida v. Bostic, 1991. And again, that was one I was just telling you. If they're telling you to leave, that's a show of authority. Stop. So that's a Fourth Amendment violation. If they're telling you, come here, and they're, you know, they've got the tone in the voice, and it's not a request, it's more of a command. It's a show of authority. Stop. And it's a violation under the Fourth Amendment. So it's a way that they have to treat you as nothing more than a human being. They can treat you as nothing less. And with proper training, which I've witnessed in the town that I live in, for the most part, these guys have to be the best trained police officers I've ever seen in my life. Because it is, it's eerie how well trained these guys are here. Um, but understanding there is the show of authority stops and by even grabbing you those are forceful movements or detentions so again that becomes a seizure based on the fourth amendment but again once we're going through all that we're also going to learn how to properly report these people as well as how to who to properly report them to And basically, again, as I spoke about, a lawful, a lawful act cannot originate from an unlawful act. And that comes from one song, B.U.S., 1963. W.O.N.G. Sun, S.U.N., B. United States, 1963. Fruit of the Poisonous Tree Doctrine does not allow police or the prosecutor to benefit from illegally obtained evidence against the accused at trial and that goes to the point of it's no sense in getting upset raising your voice having a fit in the street and trying to explain yourself to someone that has no idea who, what you're saying to them this is where I, when you go to court generally it gets thrown out if it's done properly and again that's going to be something that i'm going to show you in due time and basically an illegal seized illegally seized evidence can be used in civil cases and deposition matters why because what happens is map is not triggered map is for criminal cases and it's generally and it's basically it's map v ohio and the whole thing is it's when you are putting certain things together and they're trying to say oh let me search your car or let me pat you down when it comes to a pat down in order for them to do that they have to one believe that you have a weapon and two they must articulate where they believe that weapon is so again one they must believe that you have a weapon on you two they must articulate where that weapon is before they can pat you down. Or, I don't consent. May I search your car? I do not consent. Because, again, they have to articulate just as the same standards that they would have to use to go before a judge to get a warrant. is the exact same standards that you should be only accepting when you're out in the street. And this is occurring. If they do not have 
probable cause to search the car or the conveyance or your truck or whatever, I do not consent. Because the whole thing is, most police officers are not detectives. They do not go and actually solve crimes. And as even John Melvin used during my trial, they're not CSI. They don't go through that which were the rigors that we watch on TV. And they'll ask, don't hold me to the standards of TV. Because on TV, you see actual investigative work. When these police officers are trained, they're trained in manipulation. They're trained in lack of education. They're trained in bully tactics. And again, these are things that I'm going to go over with you in due time. Now, what we also have is the fact that we are going to go and explore things such as getting those I do not consent factors going and get them memorized and even understanding them having to articulate something in particular and being able to move to the next step. Because anything that you do not consent to, they have to prove that you did. Or they have to prove you or they had a reason to search your vehicle again. Because that is their procedure. And that's the one thing that most people overlook whenever they're doing certain things. Most people will not go into little cases that are under Terry v. Ohio. They will not go under the cases such as Matt v. Ohio. that Because the application of most of the things that most people are doing now is simply not there. So, again, as I finish up with one song versus U.S. Because basically the map hearings trigger exclusionary rules. Police are allowed to seize one vehicle if, because remember I told you the biggest words in law are and and if. And this one is if. Police are allowed to seize one's vehicle on a public roadway if. It is shown through evidence. Remember, articulation. That the vehicle has been involved in a crime and may obtain evidence of that crime. I'm going to read that one more time because, again, the word there that is enormous is if. It is shown through evidence that the vehicle has been involved in a crime and may contain evidence of that crime. So, therefore, it had to be damaged to somebody's person or property. So, though, again, that word if. They're allowed to do something if. The stop is lawful if, or you have this and. Those are the things that you have to become accustomed with, because if you don't, they will manipulate you, because that's what they're trained to do. They will try bully tactics, because that's what they're trained to do. They're, they're trained to intimidate. That's why you see a lot of times when they come out, they'll do a, a circulation pattern. One guy stands behind you, one guy stands really close to you, and then you have another one off in the distance generally. Or they'll have a surrounding of that one person. And the one thing about it is understanding their tactics. Because when you're starting to say things to them, because there are things that trigger them to say, okay, hold on, this guy does know what he's talking about. So when you can lay not one, not two, not three, but you can drop ten things on them without without blinking, without a drop of the hat, it generally backs them off because now they have to become somebody different. And the thing I also recommend now is ask them. The first question, is your body camera on? Does it have audio? Cool. Stand right there because now I got some questions to ask you. We got to talk. We have to talk. 
And a lot of times, oh, I'm asking the questions here. I apologize for you believing that. You are not the one in charge. You are the public servant. You are not the master. And then you go back and reiterate. And then now you also have case law that says you, in your oath, is the servant. You are amenable to me at all times. And remain calm. You don't have to get hostile. Those are things that flip them completely out. Because you have to remember, police officers never see you at the best time of day. When you are interacting with them, you are generally seeing them. And it is not a very good time. So, they're going to be a little amped up because they deal with 95% knuckleheads all day. It is difficult for them to readjust when it comes to that 5%. Stay in the 5% because it allows them to not only think beyond where they're at, but it allows them to come back and understand that everybody's trying to get home tonight. And that's what they're trying to do. So, keep it calm. Keep it smooth, and now let's go on. Because, again, we spoke about MAP, and one of the things about MAP is um, I'm going to go over real quickly because, again, this is something that is an in-trial case, but it, it was brought up because I made a statement in, in a video that I posted yesterday, but the episode six, that stated an unlawful act cannot lead to lawful lawful act and that's because of Matt v. Ohio. Evidence obtained in violation of the Fourth Amendment which means no probable cause to stop you but still yet they found something in your car which protects against unreasonable search and seizures may not be used in state law criminal prosecutions in state court as well as had previously been the law as in federal criminal law prosecutors and prosecutions in federal court. That was horrible reading, but you know, it's late. I'm not gonna go through that right now. So understand, Matt B. Ohio. Evidence that is not obtained properly can't be used. It doesn't matter when. If it happened after the fact, there is there is no use for it. And one other one other point I want to bring up. Because, again, now, I want to talk real quickly about passengers. And we talked about in Franklin v. California. The Fourth Amendment applies to the driver as well as the passengers because they are seized just as the driver is or the operator of the conveyance. So... Their Fourth Amendment rights are extended as well. So you're going to say, oh, I need the ID. And this is something that they use a lot in Las Vegas. Oh, we're allowed to ID everyone in the car. That does not change that in order for you to ID everyone in the car, there has to be probable cause. There has to be a crime that he articulates. There has to be something there more than a traffic violation before they can do that. Then it becomes a voluntary conversation. And if they're deciding to take you out of the car and put you in handcuffs, it then becomes a Fourth Amendment seizure because they've now acted improperly and outside of their oath and even their procedures and code. So, and with that, it is a hibble case because yes, they are allowed to ask questions, but it does not come from anything other than them having probable cause first and a traffic stop is not probable cause so until next time this is episode five i'll see you guys again probably tomorrow